my name is Junior and in this episode I'm gonna do it on my own. Reason for that is that we normally do Dutch episodes and uh, we do it with the three of us but now we want to do some sort of pilot. Let's see if you guys like it if we do some stuff in English for international viewers to see some of our contents. I want to introduce you to my BMW 2001-323i. The reason why I want to introduce you guys to the car is because with relatively uh, low amount of money I managed to get it from the stock 163 HP to the current 216 uh, dyno horsepower that it has. With only let's say around 200 euros I gained roughly 220 HP that I have at this moment and in this episode I want to tell you guys like how did I achieve that and you can do it on your own. The first one on the list would be the camshaft. So I chose to go for an intake cam of a M54B30. In the whole M52 and M54 engine line um, they basically all have the same intake cam except for the uh, 330i. So the M54 B30 intake cam is a bit more sporty than the original ones that you would have in the M54 B25 and the M52 B25 and all of that stuff. So if you want to gain some more HP out of your engine, make sure you get an intake cam from a M54 B30. I also took the intake manifold from an M54 B30. Many people might argue this because the M50 B25 out of an E36 intake manifold it has uh, even larger runners than the M54 B30 intake manifold has. I know that. But then again uh, you have to do a lot of modifications to make sure the M50 manifold uh, fits onto the engine and they're becoming really really expensive. I chose to go for the M54 B30 in the intake manifold. It's already larger than the original one. On top of that I have injectors from an M54 B30. You don't need them. So you, you can make your life way easier by just keeping the uh, stock injectors that you have on your M52 TUB25 uh, or the 28. You will never max out the, the, the power of your current injectors. To make the intake manifold fit you also need an adapter plate. So your throttle body will not fit uh, one on one on the in new intake manifold, which is a bit of a shame because the throttle body of an B30, so of a 330i, is bigger than the uh, 25 one, so the original one in my car. So normally you would say change them out, just take the throttle body of your M54 engine and leave it on the intake manifold and then all put it together in, on your uh, 25 uh, M52. But here's the problem, so you can just interchange the throttle bodies of an M52 and M54 because the M52 has a drive-by wire and a drive-by cable, so it's electric operated and mechanical operated. There's still a cable attached between the throttle bodies and your paddle. Um, while in the M54 you don't have the cable anymore. It's not mechanically, it's not drive by cable anymore. You only have a drive by wire. So in order to retrofit basically the throttle body of an M54 you need to change your paddle, make it all electric. You need to change a lot of wiring. You need to reprogram the ECU and so there's a lot of stuff involved to, to get this all done. So now we have the intake manifold, intake cam and the adapter plate. That's like the biggest spend that you have to do. Then to fit it all in case of the intake cam 
you need to have some sort of alignment tool. BMW has their own alignment tool. You can get them from eBay. Uh, they're quite expensive, I gotta say. So uh, they're still like a 100 or 150 euros to get the alignment tool. And you know, considering all the facts and knowing that you might not need it anymore in the near future, it's quite a spend on something that you only use once. I found it uh, used for like 20 euros, so I bought one, but then you know, you might consider just borrowing one from a garage or a friend or someone from Facebook or whatever. Um, someone will have it and you most likely can borrow it for the time that you need to put your intake cam in. The other thing that I bought, uh, but you might consider borrowing it, is if you want to start remapping, you need a wideband sensor. So you need an AFR, an air fuel ratio uh, lambda. This is really a thing, right? So you need to measure one way or another if your mixture in your engine is, is okay and you really need a wideband for that. I really would not advise you to start tuning your engine without having a proper wideband sensor. They're quite expensive. Once again, I found one on the internet for, I believe, 125 euros or something. But also with widebands you might have a friend or someone you know that you can borrow it from because once you're done it's done it's okay that's all of the mechanical work right so we have all of the mechanical parts and you need to put it in i will put a uh, link in the description for every youtube video that i've used to come to this point because like I said before, I'm not a mechanic and I have to look up everything. I really want to understand what I'm doing, so I'll take evenings and evenings and evenings to just dive into the to all of the materials and see what I have to do and what the possible consequences are if you don't do it right. So that's that's how I work and I really want to help you with all of the knowledge that I've built in the in the past couple of months. But if it comes to changing components on the engine and make it all work together then you have to remap, you know, fuel maps and air, all of that you need to do. And without a dyno, it's not an easy thing to do. So you need to lock all of the stuff that you're doing, you can do it via OBD, and then, you know, change your map, test again, uh, change your map, test again, do a run, test again, and so on. So in that whole process, that's why you need the AFR, because you need to see if the thing that you changed in the map is also reflecting on your mixture. This BMW runs on a MS42. It's a Siemens ECU. From what I've heard from professional tuners, it's, it's really not the easiest ECU that you can tune. Uh, but then again, I think if I explain you guys uh, a bit on, on what I've done and how I did it, you can do it you can do it yourself you have to be a bit of tech savvy i would say uh, and you have to understand really understand what you're doing don't stop reading don't just start working because it'll go horribly wrong and you can really screw up your car by screwing up the ecu this is the material that makes your car never never ever start again so Make sure you know what you're doing and make sure you ask the right questions to the right people once you have doubts or anything like that. So, in this pilot, I really wanted to take you on a tour to show you what I've done, but I can't really go into very much details in this specific episode. We really want to know if you guys, if this is what you like, because if you want to have a, let's say, an English series around my E46, we can do that. And then I will go by every step, like, you know, open up my engine again, show you how the intake works, how you need to remove the fanos, and also take you on a deep guided tour on how I remapped my ECU. I will show you how you can get it into boot mode, how you can virginize your uh, ECU, how you can you know, tune via OBD, make sure you don't make the same stupid mistakes as I did, uh, don't break your car and all of that stuff. Everything in detail is that something that YouTube would like to see so you can get 220 HP out of your 323i. Mm -hmm.